anyone can develop epilepsy, or as we commonly call it in Jamaica, FITS. It is a central nervous system disorder that causes seizures or periods of unusual behavior, sensations, and sometimes loss of awareness. Here to give us more information is pediatric neurologist, Dr. Judy Tapper. Good morning, Doc. Good morning, ma'am. Welcome, Welcome to, to Smile, Smile Jamaica. Jamaica. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Um, you're not born with it? Or are you? Yes, sometimes you can be born with epilepsy. And there are two main causes of epilepsy, congenital and acquired. If you're born with it, it's perhaps related to some genetic disorder that's causing it. And more and more research has re unfolded a number of genes that are associated with and can cause epilepsy. Or you, there can be abnormal events that occur during pregnancy that results in abnormal brain development, and this results in epilepsy, such as the brain may be abnormally for, um, formed. We call this cortical dysplasia. Okay. Mm. But there are conditions that you can acquire that results in your having epilepsy, and this includes things such as infection on the brain, meningitis or encephalitis, and um, trauma to the brain can also result in epilepsy, brain tumors, stroke, and sometimes certain toxins, so poisons. So you, you can get it at any age and at any time then? You can. Uh, epilepsy can affect anyone at any age, any time. However, it's seen more commonly in the extremes of ages in children and in the elderly, and particularly in children. Mm. There are so many myths surrounding epilepsy in Jamaica, Doc, and I want us to address some yes. of them. Yes. Um, one of the things we are discussing off air is people say once somebody um, has, a, has a seizure, we, we tend to call it a, a fit. You have to take our shoes and put it over their nose. No. This is a big disservice to the poor patient having the seizure. It does nothing for them. It actually closes off their airway. What we should do in the first aid management of the patient if they're having a convulsive seizure is to put them on their side. This automatically opens their airway because the tongue comes forward and the saliva also drains out of the mouth. Oh. We should absolutely never put anything in the patient's mouth to try to hold down the tongue. That's another myth that when you're having a seizure, you can bite your tongue and bite off your tongue and swallow it. Mm -hmm. When you're having an epileptic seizure, you have what we call a tonic phase where your muscles go very tense and the muscles in the jaw also go very tense. It's difficult to open the mouth. So when you put something hard and firm in the mouth, you can actually do damage breaking off teeth or the person may bite off what you're putting in the mouth and swallow that and choke on that. So don't try to put anything in the patient's mouth. So when you have a seizure, you just actually wait it out? You, you do, because most seizures will stop on their own within five minutes. Mm -hmm. And if a seizure lasts longer than that, then you'd want to be taking the patient to the nearest hospital for them to be given medication to stop the While seizure. While you're having a seizure, Dr. Judds, what happens to the body? Um, what happens? When you're having a, what we call a generalized tonic-clonic seizure, which is the, one of the commonest seizures that we know, you suddenly lose awareness and consciousness and you go stiff, you fall to the ground, you're unresponsive, and that quickly changes into what we call the clonic phase where you have a rhythmic jerking of all voluntary muscles, the face, the arms, the limbs, your eyes are usually open, they're usually rolled upwards in the head. There's frothing at the mouth and you may empty your bowel and bladder. And you can injure yourself in that time if you're jerking against your objects. So one of the first aids also would be to remove you from any sharp objects. Sometimes it affects your breathing and you can actually stop breathing for a short time or breathe less than you usually would. And this can cause what we call perioral cyanosis, blueness around the mouth. But there are certain seizures that are not fits, that are very vague. We, these, one example is an absence seizure, mm -hmm. and it's a very important seizure for us to know and be able to recognize. It occurs mainly in children, and it's called absence because you're totally unresponsive and absent. This is a very brief seizure. It happens for less than 15 seconds, 5 to 15 seconds. But during that time, the child is completely unresponsive, unaware of what's going on around them. They may have some what we call subtle automatism, such as blinking of the eyes or mm. swallowing repeatedly. Or if they're walking, they may walk semi-purposely, fully walk out in traffic. But this happens recurrently and throughout the day. And initially you wonder, is this child just daydreaming? 
But after a while, you get to realize that something is happening to the child, and um, you take them in for medical assessment. Because if you don't, having these seizures and having them not controlled, they do poorly in school. OK, mm -hmm. if I'm epileptic and I'm going to have a seizure, can I tell? Can I tell that Sometimes, it's some, yes. Some people do get what we call an aura or a warning to their seizure. And depending on where in the brain the seizure starts, you may have different types of aura. So oh. sometimes you can. And in that case, you might have enough time to go and put yourself in a safe place or mm -hmm. call for help. Wow. Yeah. So you sit down or something, sorry. So you yes, you sit down somewhere that's safe or lie down on a s surface. Okay. And um, preferably a, a flat surface. A flat surface. Yes, yes. not too high because that's I mean, correct. Yeah. That you won't fall off. Um, when we spoke about the shoes, are there any other 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 myths that sometimes yes. you hear? Yes. So some people think that you're possessed with demons mm -hmm. and obia and spirits, and that's what used to be thought in the old days. And epilepsy also actually derives from a Greek word meaning possessed. But this is not true. This is a medical disorder affecting mm -hmm. the brain. It's a chronic disorder. And it's a disorder, chronic disorder like any other, asthma or diabetes. There's also myths that the epilepsy is a cause of madness yeah. or a type of madness. This is absolutely not true. And there's also myths that epilepsy is contagious. If you sit next to somebody who is having a seizure, you're going to catch it yourself. <laughs> That's this crazy. is not true. How, how prevalent is it in Jamaica? Um, internationally, it's about 1% of the population, 1% to 2% of the population will have epilepsy. We are no more or less than that in Jamaica, as far as... No, you know. no. Is it genetic? If there's someone in your family that has it, um, should you, should you uh, well, not be concerned, but at least try to find out if you're prone to it? Yes, some types of seizures can be genetic, but most aren't. And most times, if you have a seizure, you're not going to pass it on to your unborn child. Okay. Whoa. Well, okay. Can it be cured? Epilepsy can be treated. Can't be cured. No, but... Some types of epilepsy, you outgrow the tendency for having seizures at a certain age. Mm. Um, what, what happens when it presents yeah. itself at a later age? It depends on what's causing it. And okay. in the later age, things like strokes or tumors, trauma would be causing the epilepsy, in which case if you perhaps wouldn't outgrow. This my grandson, I was telling you before, my grandson was born um, with epilepsy. And um, his mom tells me that he takes 14 tablets a day. Um, and I was also told that every time he gets a seizure, he could actually die. Yes. Is that, well, that sounds like it's a serious thing. It illness. is a serious thing. And our first line treatment for epilepsy is medication. And most patients, 70% of patients, will be actually controlled with epilepsy. But there is an entity called sudden unexpected death with epilepsy. And this is something that we've recognized relatively recently in the last 20 years or so. And there's more and more research being done about this. And um, sudden unexplained death with epilepsy usually occurs in patients who have intractable or difficult to control seizures, and especially those who suddenly come off of their medication. Okay. You have an event coming up on Sunday? Yes, there's an event, Walk and Talk in the Park for Epilepsy. And this is a fundraising event put on by the Jamaica Epilepsy Association. It's this Sunday, November the 24th at Emancipation Park between the hours of 7 to 11. Mm -hmm. And it's to bring public awareness to, about epilepsy. We'll be having talks and prizes, surprising games. So we are asking, encouraging the public to come out and support us. Yep. It's $1,000. You get a T-shirt and you get refreshments. And as I said, there is yoga demonstrations and talks. I asked you before we came on about lifestyle. Is there anything that you eat or that will bring it on? Or if you eat something, you won't get it? Anything no, like that? not at all. This is not lifestyle related. Um, most times, as I said, it's something genetic right. or acquired. Mm -hmm. huh. And so normal, healthy diet. But there is a diet, actually, the ketogenic diet, that we do use to treat some patients whose seizures do not respond well to medication. And this is a diet that you put the patient on a high fat and you produce what we call ketone bodies or ketosis. And these sometimes help to control the seizures. Which would mean if you eat high fat, you don't get it? Or is that after you get it, you eat the high fat? <laughs> after you, no, no. If you eat high fat, a high fat diet, it doesn't mean it's going to protect you right, from right. getting epilepsy. Mm. And there are certain lifestyle things. If you do have epilepsy that you want to do, 
which is just usually part of healthy living, ensuring that you get adequate sleep and exercise, physical exercise, and most importantly, take your medication. Yeah, man. Thanks yeah. for coming, man. Thank I'm you. Very, Thanks very for impressed. having me. You know your stuff. Thanks yeah. for coming. Dr. Judy Tapper, pediatric neurologist. Um, after the break, we have a chat with Singing Melody. Stay with us. 10 minutes to your health. We'll do it again next Thursday. Soon come.